There's a new class of blockbuster drugs. Drugs like Ozempic. They're changing bodies. And all of a sudden, just the weight starts falling off. Fortunes. It just got too expensive. They're just bank breakers. And industries. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of skepticism. The impact of these drugs from business to health is just beginning. From the journal, Trillion Dollar Shot. Find it in the journal feed wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Faux Fiction Audio brings you another case from the spiral bound and sticky note files of Mickey McKinney, Boy Detective. Mickey McKinney, that mini mystery man, solves the cases that plague the halls of Maple Ridge Middle School with his trusty partner and friend, Sam Hayes. No pet or project too lost, no cafeteria food too mysterious, no case too small when Mickey McKinney is on the job. McKinney. Mickey McKinney. Yeah, but you knew that. Heck, this is the season finale. If you listen to all the episodes, you're probably expecting me to start with some incredibly insightful quote, tied in with a monologue that is about half the length of something from Hamlet. And you'd be half right. The story starts like most you've heard from me, in the dusty, dimly lit broom closet I called my office, between the science wing and the cafeteria. For lack of anything better to do, I was practicing blowing double bubbles with my gum, when the door opened, signaling the entrance of a new client. For a second, I thought that the light from the guttering bulb was deceiving me. Then I almost swallowed my gum in shock when I realized that instead of the usual Johns and Janes, there was a scrawny, untidy teacher standing in the doorway. Would this be the closet where McKinney and Hayes' investigations is located? Uh, yes sir. What can I do for you? I am Dr. Frederick Schatz, head of the biology department. Nice to meet you, sir. I'm Mickey McKinney of the, uh, (laughs) student department. So I see. And the janitor does not mind you using the closet? Ever since I found his pet parrot, he gave me a key. Uh, am I in trouble, sir? Actually, Mr. McKinney, I need your help. I got to my feet as fast as I could and dusted off my best chair for my new client. Considering the fact that it was paint splattered and bucket shaped, I wasn't surprised when he opted to stand. Are you familiar with the... Mm, incident we had a few days ago? Sure. Something about a couple frogs getting loose in the biology classroom, right? The Chronicler had a special edition on their website. I'm surprised you read the school paper. (laughs) No, I don't. But when they've got huge headlines like Frogs Rampage in Biolab, it's kind of hard to miss. (laughs) There was also this hilarious picture of this teacher on the desk screaming and... Oh. That picture was out of context and not amusing at all! Yes sir, sorry. Further proof that the sloppy journalism is that the story is completely inaccurate. I was not in fear for my life, nor was I crying for my mother. It was also not merely a handful of frogs that were released, it was all of them. I'm sorry. I must be hearing things. Did you say all the frogs got out? Yeah, every single one of the bouncing ring tufels is gone. It is sure to set my lesson plan back at least two weeks while we wait for new ones. So why aren't you, or the school board, doing something, uh, sir? Because while it was inconvenient for all involved, they consider it just a prank. Nothing valuable was taken or damaged. Unless you count mein pride und dignity. And now everyone is just waiting for someone to catch the culprit. So you're hiring me? Yeah, that is the idea. I can't go around asking the students here if they know anything. I'm a teacher. They won't... They won't confide in me if they find out something not like they would with you, another classmate. I need your help to find the Unrenheistenscheifter behind these crimes so I can redeem my respectability. Don't worry, sir. I'll find out who it is even if I have to skip all of my classes. No, you won't. Uh, yes, sir. Can I get a pass to skip one class in an emergency? 
I want to make myself perfectly clear, Mr. McKinney. You will investigate this quietly while continuing to participate in your classes and other mandatory school activities. If I hear even one complaint that makes me look like a dumb cough, I'll make sure you won't be able to solve your cases by the water fountain. With that being said, you've made a name for yourself at the school as a, uh, a detective of sorts, Mr. McKinney. Catch whoever is behind this and I'll use what power I have on the school board to let you use this closet on a more permanent basis. And then he was gone, with only the smell of chloroform lingering in the air to assure me that he had been here at all. I was still mulling it over when five foot two of leg and muddy fatigue sauntered into the room and sat in the best chair as if they owned the place. Hey McSpacey, you thinking of anything special at the moment or just tired of staring at the ceiling? I looked up to meet the blue-green eyes of my best friend and partner in crime, Sam Hayes. Tall, blonde, and sassy, Sam was everything I wasn't. She joined my operation a couple months ago when her parents were transferred to the nearby military base. She had a little problem with someone setting her up for stealing the test answers until I bailed her out. At the time, she thought I was nosy and just a few pickles short of a tuna salad. I thought she was insulting that her taste of camouflage and army boots were a fashion don't. But between the two of us, we've nabbed the real rap behind it all. And along the way, we also managed to become friends. Are you going to be monologuing for the whole episode? Uh, yeah, I was planning to. So, is there a reason you have your black and white head in the clouds? Or have you been breathing in the bleach fumes too long? Option A. We caught a case while you were tossing the cow skin around the football field. Pig skin. Yeah, potato, potato. How about you buy me a hot dog and I'll tell you about it? Oh no. Buy your own hot dog or you can spend your lunch period on a coat hook. <laughs> uh, deal. So, let me get this straight. This teacher wants us to do all the work solving his problem for him. For free? We should get at least a pass on homework. Dr. Schatz had some pretty compelling reasons to make me take the case. And we're not really supposed to tell anyone else we're on the job. And it wasn't just an accident? I mean, it's not as if those Terraniums are Fort Knox or anything. Not a chance. Take a look at Monday's issue of The Chronicler. Sources say that every single frog was released from their cages by an unidentified culprit, creating the scene of chaos in the biology classroom. The prankster also unlocked and opened all the windows, allowing most of the frogs to escape en masse. He's back, isn't he? A huge extravagant prank is right up his alley. I was wondering when he would show his... non-existent face. I mean, I'm sure he has a face. We've just never gotten close enough to see it. And not that we haven't tried, of Yeah, part. I got that. Come on, Tonto. Let's go round up the posse. No, no, no! Not today! Burners, what's new? Everything! The board finally updated all our equipment, and I'm not having you break something like last time! Oh, come on. I haven't broken anything since... Yesterday. See? It's been a whole 24 hours. Get out! Uh, Sam, a little help? Look, burners, you like equations, right? Now, we both know, based on the last eight episodes, that McClutz plus this lab is going to equal an accident at some point. That's not an if, that's a when. Hey! Now, if you can just do a little favor for us, I will subtract said klutz from the equation and you can get back to your project of the week. And what if this time I say no? You won't. Oh yeah? Why is that? Seen the school e-paper? How many people do we know that like causing trouble? Of this magnitude, I mean. Okay. I'm in. What do you need? For now? Information. This was just down the hall from you. Any chance you saw something suspicious? Mick, I'd love to help, but I was attending a science lecture at the college across town. Fortunately, the web cameras you installed around the lab didn't go with you. <laughs> what lab cameras? What are you talking about? Makuki? The ones that monitor for intruders like McMinnie here. We were hoping one might have picked up someone sneaking into the biology classroom. Uh, okay, um, let's hypothetically say I did have one or 
uh, 12 such devices hidden around this lab, even though that would obviously be breaking a few school rules. <laughs> Burners, we don't need a confirmation on your hypothetical spyware, just a witness that I can start intimidating. Okay, let me get back to you in 10 minutes then. <laughs> Nathan Jones. Do I know you? Uh, Mickey McKinney, boy detective. Perhaps you've heard of me? Wait, aren't you that weird kid who's always going through the lost and found? Sometimes. Now I've got a question for you, Jonesy. About frogs. You want to learn about frogs? Try reading about one of those books in the library. (laughs) You want to avoid being expelled? Convince me you didn't free all the frogs in the bio classroom. What do you mean? You're not the principal. No, I'm just the guy investigating the incident. Like some kind of cop? No, not like a cop. Didn't you hear me just now? I'm Mickey McKinney, boy detective, and I think I know your little froggy secret. I don't know what you're talking about. I I claim the right to plead the fifth. Am I going to need a lawyer? Because Will from my English class, his dad is a lawyer, and he knows a lot of stuff from him. Jonesy, Jonesy, this isn't an 80s cop show or a courtroom, and you don't need Will from English class as your lawyer. I just want to know about the campaigns you've led in the past to ban frog dissections at this school. I'll give you credit, you're very thorough. You've done protests, written hundreds of Facebook posts, tweets, and you've got to save the frogs blog. And yet, in spite of that, they keep cutting up your little amphibian friends. Must have made you angry, right? All that work with no results, and then someone gave you the idea to set all of them free, didn't they? Okay, I thought you were weird before, but now you just sound crazy. I might do all that frog stuff, but... Stop the interrogation, he didn't do it. Who's that? Jonesy, this is my partner, Sam Hayes. Sam, the suspect I was interrogating before you interrupted. Hey, hey, Josie, Jonesy, eyes on me. So do, uh, do you do this sort of thing often? Because I love solving mysteries, too. Sam, you're distracting my suspect. And what do you mean he didn't do it? He was just about to confess. Yeah, not likely, McRong. He's a frog activist with an emphasis on the active, and burner has got a great shot of him on her hypothetical camera. Nice theory, but no. I was going through some old YouTube videos, and I found out what Nathan's real problem with frogs is. Yeah? Is there a point to this? Uh, Would you mind moving that a little farther away? What, is he allergic or something? Renitophobia. Gazoontite. It's the fear of frogs, McDummy. Jonesy here can't get within five feet of this little guy without certain results. No way. There's no way that's an actual... Oh, well, would you look at that? Yeah, he probably has been trying to ban frogs so his secret wouldn't become general knowledge. So there's no way he could have released the frogs if he faints on sight. Jeez, you think, McDuh? I'm going to take him to the nurse's office. Try not to do anything stupid until I get back. Define stupid. Oh, great. What do you want? Man, people are just not happy to see me today. I'm not surprised. And I repeat, what do you want? AJ, 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 AJ. Is that any way to treat someone you share such a special symbiotic relationship with? Last time I helped you, I got set up on a date, and you neglected to give me an interview afterwards. Foolishness of youth. I'm older and wiser now. That was two months ago. Okay, so it was a very steep learning curve. But I've grown, and I've changed. You also stole my costume at the murder mystery party, and have been avoiding me for the past week. I have not. Every time you see me coming for an interview, you lock yourself in your office. I'm just a little camera shy. Mickey, I've got a deadline in ten minutes. Tell me what you want so I can tell you to get out. I need all the info you've got on the great escape in the bio class. Read the Chronicler. You'll find everything you need. Now scram. Everything is in there? You didn't keep any thoughts or ideas about the incident to yourself? Alright, come on. The school paper is read by, what, 20% of the school at most? Who's gonna notice if your story gets out a little late? Okay. Firstly, insulting me is gonna get you even less results than flattery. Secondly, readership might be down at the moment, but so long as I keep it above 10%, Dr. Schatz has promised to let me run it another semester, which is why I can't afford to let anything be late. Thirdly, what part of scram do you not get? Come on, AJ, be a pal. You give me a little and I'll give you my side of the story when this is over. Ha, ah, I've heard that one before. All right, look, Dr. Schatz hired me to- Dr. Schatz hired you to do what? Solve the case? Uh, no, that's not what- Did I say hire? I, I meant fire? 
Okay, I got nothing. Can this be off the record? Sure. Uh, actually, you know what? I just thought of something that could help. It's on my phone. Really? What is it? Say cheese. You look idiotic. Perfect. <clears throat> Cindy, we're going to have to rework the headline. Again? Don't give me that look. Just take down the headline. <clears throat> Embarrassed teacher recruits boy detective for frog fiasco. I'll get to work on the little article to go with it. Got it, boss. What? No, this investigation is supposed to be a secret. Good to know. Cindy, make that a <clears throat> embarrassed teacher secretly recruits the boy detective for frog fiasco and put secretly in quotations. Hey, wait. What happened to off the record? Oh, we can just say you're an anonymous source. Sells papers either way. You're just using that and I don't get anything back? Well, now you know how I feel. Anything else you want me to add to the article? Nothing that won't activate the network sensors. Hello? What? Are you serious? AJ, we need to go quick. Someone put dye in the swimming pool. <laughs> Everyone, keep back. Nothing to see here. Dr. Schatz, uh, this is the second time the school has been the victim of a random incident. What are your thoughts on the subject? No comment. Everyone, get back to the classroom now, or I'm giving you all detention. Move aside, sweetheart. Dr. Schatz, can you confirm or deny that these two pranks are linked? What part of no comment do you not understand? Everyone, get back to class! Shell, shell! Hey, kid! Can't go sneaking in there, pool area's closed. Not a problem, officer. Mickey McKinney. I've been asked to help investigate these incidents. Do I look like I'm fooling around? Get back to class! This is police business. What's going on here? Just a kid trying to sneak into the pool area, sir. <sighs> it's okay. He's with me. You know this kid, sir? You don't recognize Jack McKinney's boy? Jack? Well, I'll be darn. Would you look at that? Splitting image right down to the hat. Uh, thank you, sir. That's Officer Gomez to you, kid. Don't know if you uh, remember me, though. I was just a rookie. Oh, oh, yes, of course, sir. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. You missed history class. I had to tell Miss Caverly you were in the nurse's office. Who's this? Your girlfriend? Every time someone says that, I die a little on the inside. Officer Gomez, the comedian is my partner, Sam Hayes. Sam, Officer Gomez, and you remember Sergeant Rhodes. Sirs, Mick, aren't we- Why don't you get back to your post, Gomez? I'll keep an eye on the kids. Yes, sir. Hey, kid, stop by the station anytime. Everyone would love to see you. I cannot believe you were trying to sneak out to the crime scene. Do you know how much trouble you can get into? I just wanted to look around. Dr. Schatz hired us to look into the case. I'm pretty sure this is not what he had in mind. Look, kid, I respect and I admire you following in your dad's footsteps. I really do. But you're too young right now. Sir, the last time we saw a prank like this, we almost went to jail. This could be a part of something just as big. You think it's the guy that got you to steal the Burns Opal? He has a flair for creating chaos. All we need to do is take a look at the scene just to make sure. Just one minute, sir, please. I promise not to touch a thing. <sighs> oh, heck. Just for a minute, but stay with me at all times. Got it? Wow, the Chronicler wasn't kidding. Someone really did dye the pool purple. Wait, what are you on about? AJ posted an update to the school website. What? I figured we should know the latest news. How did they get that story out so fast? AJ and I found out about that around the same time. It's not like he wrote Paradise Lost, McDoubtful. It's just a quick paragraph and a picture. Though, they'll probably have a huge front page scoop tomorrow. And goodbye, declining readers. What? It, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Hey, kid. I've got this. Stay here. It's okay, Gomez. They won't touch anything. Quick, while he's distracted, I'll cover you. What's that? Eyedropper, so burners can test a sample. You said you wouldn't- I never pinky swore. Besides, you never said you wouldn't touch anything. Fine, I got a sample. Just stay casual. Don't look suspicious. Stop talking, you're making it worse. Hold on a second. 
Empty your pockets. <laughs> Empty our pockets? Yeah, sh sure, of course. Uh, let's see here. I've got two pens, an eraser, and some gum. Sam? Two pieces of jerky and some tissues. Sorry, kids. Had to make sure you weren't trying to sneak anything out. Get out of here. Yes, sir. Thank you again, sir. See you around. <laughs> you probably will. <laughs> Well? Well what? Did you find out what kind of diet it was? Did you... Did it ever occur to you to try some common courtesy? Like, you know, an average old... Uh, hey, Barners! How are you doing? Oh, fine, Mickey. Finished a couple prototypes. Some government projects have perfected a new fuel source. All before lunch. But you know what? How was your day? Wow, Burners, you're incredible! All I did was walk around trying to make a fashion statement with a 50-year-old hat, eat candy, and break a couple things! By the way, did you find time in your INCREDIBLY busy day to analyze the sample we brought in? You know, just a, just a little bit of courtesy, Mick. That's all I'm asking! Okay, first of all, I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. Shut up. Second... Do you remember how important it is to catch this guy? Yeah, I haven't forgotten the creep that almost got me suspended. And thrown in jail. Oh, I would have bailed us out. I just happened to finish my law degree. At this point, I'm not surprised. So, the sample? Oh, brilliant and talented one? Ah, that's more like it. Well, it's, um, it's too thin to be paint, like you thought, Mickey. More like a dye you would use for cloth. Ha! I knew it! You owe me a dollar. You sure you don't want to hear the rest of her analysis of the die first? I still can't figure out how you snuck that out, by the way. A magician never reveals her secrets. And the last time I waited on payment, you kept asking Burners questions until I got bored and left. <sighs> Fine. Uh, okay, I don't have a dollar. Will, will you take two melted chocolate bars instead? Uh, you can pay me later. Burners, any way to trace the die? Nana, you can get this stuff from any bargain store. So, in other words, we're not going to catch this guy because he happened to buy a one-of-a-kind type of die. He may be an evil, mysterious mastermind, but unfortunately, he's not completely stupid. Ah, well, thanks for the assist anyway. <coughs> oh, jeez. Uh, sorry, burners. What? What's that? Did you... Did you just break my prototype? We should run. Mickey McKinney. When a smallish, extremely ticked off girl genius is screaming multiple things that should not be repeated to impressionable young listeners, it's generally a good policy to get as far away as you can in the opposite direction as fast as possible. After all, as the saying goes, you play with fire, there's a good chance you'll get burned. And at the moment, Burners was like a small yet highly volatile firecracker. Actually, scratch that, she was more like an atomic bomb, intent on blowing up on me. With that in mind, Sam and I decided it would be better to reconvene the next day as she had football practice and there was a dearth of clients for me to assist. I was not expecting the phone call the next morning, a full hour earlier than should have been legal on a Thursday morning. Ugh. Hello? Mick, you gotta come to school and see this. Hurry! Uh, Sam? <clears throat> What's going on? Hey, Sam? Hello? I made it to school in 20 minutes. An achievement in my book. I was still two blocks away when I saw the crowd and knew our mysterious prankster had struck again. All the desks had been lined up in neat little rows on the grass, the teacher's desks in front like a mother hen in front of her chicks. A small crowd of curious early birds gathered round, held back by a handful of teachers, Dr. Schatz, and his gigantic megaphone. What took you so long? Dr. Schatz has been yelling for the past 10 minutes. Ah, traffic was murder. Two old ladies and a stroller got in my way. 
We're supposed to be the ones catching this guy, and so far he's pulled off three pranks and we still don't know who he is. Dr. Schatz, uh, how do you plan to catch the culprit behind these pranks? I'm Cogman, Mr. Harris. Don't worry, I've got a pretty good idea of who it is. I just need to make a call. Sam, are you wearing a skirt? Oh, yeah. Does it look nice? Well, I, I guess. I mean, well, it's not a bad look. Maybe a little girly. Well, maybe not girly girly. Just a little unexpected. Not in a bad way, though. Newsflash, McDumbo. I actually am a girl. I know that. I just... Did you lose another bet? What? You don't think I would wear a skirt voluntarily? Oh, well... Quite frankly, yes. You don't think I want to look pretty? I didn't say that. Well, alert to Mickey. Maybe I do want to look more attractive, so you should just- if I could just interject before you get any angrier. I never said you needed the skirt to look pretty. Oh. Well, okay then. I will not repeat myself one more time. I want each student to pick up a desk and take it with them to their first class of the day. Anyone who does not goes straight to the detention. Now move it! Like I was saying, we'll put these desks away, then I've got a call to make. It was bad. It was really, really bad. And Sam and I knew it. The first job with the frogs had been almost a week ago. The second went to die in the pool only yesterday. Whoever this guy was, he was stepping up his game. And getting more extravagant as he did so. He had to nab him before he did something completely over the top, like put a three-ring circus in the cafeteria or paint the whole school pink. Oh great, Mr. Kim is substituting again. Okay guys, let's get this done as quickly as possible so we can get to discussing the rise of Christianity in the Roman Empire. Fifth row, let's get those desks lined up with the window. Sixth row, in line with the pencil sharpener. Good. Last row, come on guys, line it up. Good. <clears throat> Nice job, everyone. Thanks for being so cooperative. Now, we're very behind today, so everyone take out a pencil and a piece of notebook paper so I can give you a quiz in your reading. First question. We'll have to wait until after our morning announcements. Good morning, fellow students. I trust you enjoyed your little surprise out on the lawn. It's a shame you couldn't take advantage of a school day outside, but teachers will be teachers, right? Allow me to introduce myself. I am... The Prank Master! <laughs> Hi everyone, Ruby Fink here of Faux Fiction Audio. If you're listening and wondering what happened, yes, I left you out a cliffhanger. There was no way to fit such a fun story into one episode, so you're just going to have to wait until next week to hear the rest. In the meantime, some of you were asking about a possible blooper reel at the end of the episode, so I put this together just for you. I hope that you enjoy this as much as I did making it, and forgive me for leaving you hanging for another week or so. Enjoy! The name's McKinney. Mickey McKinney. When a smallish, extremely ticked-off girl genius is screaming multiple things that should not be repeated to impressionable young... Dang it! I was doing so good. I will not repeat myself one more time. I want each student to go up and pick... Wait, move. I want to go pick up a desk. I will not repeat myself one more time. I want each student to pick up a desk and take it with them to their first class of the day. Anyone who does not goes straight to the tension. Now move it! Schnell! Schnell! Oh, that was a good schnell. If you need to copy and paste that schnell, then it's all right. I had to catch my breath. <clears throat> With that in mind, Sam and I decided it would be better to... Dang it. Dang it. That, that wait. All right. That's the one mistake. <clears throat> and I was not expecting the phone call earlier. Dang it. I lied. <laughs> Nine comments, Mr. Harry. We're on page 29, by the way, folks. Are you still with us? It was also not merely a handful of frogs that were released. It was all of them. My babies. Like little tadpole children to me they were. Yeah. Every single one of those bouncing green toothers is poofed. Gone. Yeah. Do you hear them? Calling for me in the forest? Is that your phone? <laughs> it 
Faith is a warning and a promise. Shots paid stream. Or is that eins, eins, I don't know my numbers. Yeah, every single one of those bouncing green toofers is pushed, gone. Yeah, every single one of those bouncing green toofers is pushed, gone. Try not saying poofed it's like in the that. Script. That that might be what it says, but also do a uh, try. No, it's like it's it's like a sound. I think it's um has gone. Have you ever heard a German doctor say poofed? I have now. <laughs> exactly. Please sit back down. You are aggressing me. I know. <laughs> Don't want to take off the I'll try it. I'll try it your rural American way. Do both. No, sim simply the charming mountain people you Americans are. Go on. Yes, with your light beers and your diet cokes. <laughs> well, that's, can we <laughs> do that again? Yeah. It got caught my throat. <laughs> uh, get out. Can we get one where you kind of sound like a dog? Get Okay. Get out! There we go. You will investigate this quietly while continuing to participate in your classes and other mandatory school activities. If I hear even one complaint that makes me look like a dumb cough, I'll make sure you won't be able to solve your cases by the water fountain. With that being said, you've made a name for yourself at this school as a, a detective of sorts behind... Mr. McKinney, catch whoever is behind this and I'll use what power I have on the school board to let you use this closet on a more permanent basis. On a more permanent basis. Oh, Vida Shane. Oh, Vida Shane. Hey, Burners, how you doing? Oh, fine, Mickey. Finished a couple prototypes, some government projects, and perfected a new fuel source gobble for lunch. But how was your day? I really do. But you're too young right now. Okay, mine's on vibrate. <laughs> yeah, but you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, much more disruptive than the phone. Okay, take it again from the top. Just, just, turn, just turn around. <laughs> just turn. What, what is happening? Uh, you're either trying to dance just, or you're trying to kill I'm trying to turn her around. Oh, no, now I'm turned around. <laughs> no, now you're turned around. Now I'm flipping you around. <laughs> And now I'm opening and the dip. door. You don't recognize Jack McKinney's boy. Huh. Show us how much you know. Punk. Noob. Noob. Greener <laughs> than freshly mowed grass. You, boy, you're greener than freshly mowed grass if you don't know Jack McKinney's boy. Here, I got a picture of him in my wallet. And this is us at the fair. This is us just grocery shopping. Okay, because that you have a crush. To, this is us going to... No, we were just very close friends. They don't keep pictures in their wallets anymore. Now it's all on their phone. It's a real <laughs> big wallet. <laughs> no, now it's on their phone. This is a picture when we went to space camp. <laughs> this is a picture when we drove through Maryland and ate boiled crabs. This is when we took <laughs> Mickey to space camp. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much trouble that could get you into? I would not be able to save you from that. That's against the law. It's not right. It's not just. I'm pretty sure this is and not what he had in mind. Andrew wouldn't want me to save you from that. <laughs> sorry, did I interrupt the line? I am so sorry. <laughs> it's okay, you, but you basically said the line, which is, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is not what he had in mind. What took you so long? Dr. Shots have been... Wow. Faux Family Cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney, Violet Hayes as Sam... Oops. <laughs> Violet Hayes as Sam Fink. This is hard to read on the desk here, so let's see. Uh, that'll be better. Hope I don't rattle it. Okay. I'm just going to take a whack at it, Ruby, so hit record. You sure you want an evil lab? <laughs> just a really, like, half phoned in, half not. <laughs> ha ha ha! Alright. Want me to do the take it from the top?
Alright. <clears throat> Good morning, fellow students. I trust you enjoyed your little surprise out on the lawn. It's a shame you couldn't take advantage of a school day outside, but teachers will be teachers, right? <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Prank Master. There we go. Is that better? Oh, okay. I thought you meant the I thought you meant the creepy chuckle, but okay. Episode 9, Mickey McKinney, Attack of the Amphibians, Part 1, was written and directed by Ruby Fink, with music by Leon Viscara. Faux Family cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney, Violet Fink as Sam Hayes, Leanne Labra as Burners, Anna Edelson as Sydney, CJ Longhammer as Sergeant Rhodes and Dr. Schatz, Brandon Seaslat as AJ Harris, and Mr. Kim. Lindsay Werner as Cindy, Shayna Hammer as Gomez, Finn Kobler as Jonesy, and me, Zach Johnson, as your announcer. This recording, characters, and the situations within are property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. So until the next time, Faux Fiction Audio says goodbye. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium, and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?